Who are you rooting for, Buffalo or Kansas City? Buffalo. The people claim the stands. They had to go out and shovel the stands. They paid 20 bucks an hour to go. I don't know where they put it. How did they get it out of there? Well, they were throwing it on the field. Is that what they did? How'd they get it? It's a way to celebrate. I don't know how they did it, though. I mean, you get way up in the stands. I think they just sat on it. Are you being an usher today? Would you like to do the collection? Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> Very Italian. Uh, okay. Summer wedding. Down the corner. Carol Lee. Uh, At least she's, she's asked her. She's <laughs> find out people's favorites. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so 
There's quite a few actually. Two, four, six, eight, ten. There's a dozen. And then we had you guys. You know, there's six of us. That's 18. Oh, I didn't count Carol in until it's 20. There's all this talk about electric cars not starting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were complaining about the Oh, it's not going to be heated. So, we won't be doing the work. It sucks a lot of heat out there. Pam doesn't turn on the heater for that reason. So, when I get in the car, she drives for 10 miles. So it's cold. She won't turn the heater on because it decreases the battery. I didn't have time. She called me. She texted me at 8. I didn't have time to put an extra blanket in the car. Yeah, I put a little blanket. The guys, the guys next door are leaving big, little small church, in my big garden. Part. Little church, big part. It's true. It is true. It is true. Mm -hmm. So I left three bowlers there. I now have them at my house, but I haven't seen me one. I was gonna, I was gonna talk to. Them. This is the end of it. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We may be few, but we are mighty. We are the little church with the big heart. Lisa will not be here today. She's out sick with COVID. So the class she was intending, well, I don't know if it's COVID, but the class she was intending to um, lead and facilitate after worship will be in two weeks on February 4th. But welcome all of you today and welcome to all of you who have joined us on Facebook or Zoom. It's a cold day out there and uh, we're so glad that you've come into Saint worship to get warmed up by the presence of this community. Annual meeting will be after worship next Sunday at 11.30 a.m. And for those joining us in person, there will be a, a lunch and then the annual report will be published tomorrow. So you can come in and pick it up or it will be sent out online. It's a little late this year because people were a little late getting their articles in and we had some new, we had some new committees too. So I will be on vacation from Tuesday to the following Tuesday, and then I will return. So if you have any sort of pastoral care emergency, please call the office. So I would like to invite Carol Lee up and tell us the good news of what happened on Friday with the Winter Fest with the Y children and parents.
Good morning. I just want you all to know that what a difference this church makes in ways you wouldn't think. Um, I had lots of helpers show up to help with the meal to go for the Y parents, for their families actually. 45 dinners went out that night. Wow. And every single family was absolutely thrilled. We had families from seven in them to maybe one in them. It was wonderful. It was a real community effort, and we will be doing it again. Um, it just makes a difference in their lives, and it makes it easier on parents who are just strung out like all of us, but they're working with little kids and coming home late, and by the time Friday comes, they've had it, like us all. So the other thing I want to say is that um, the cultural council and the North Falmouth Village Association porch fest, as we all know, got canceled because of the beautiful weather we had all summer on the weekends. And so now they have rescheduled because their cultural grant had to be used. So they came and wanted to know if they could use our church. And of course we said, yes. So they are presenting a celebration of Cape Verdean culture and music. And it is going to be Saturday, February 10th from 3 to 5 p.m. The uh, tickets are free. Um, and it starts I, I, 3 to 5, I already told you that. So, the, and there'll be a food truck here. The food truck will be um, Cape Verdean food. It's like a kind of a cultural food truck that go around. And Candida Rose, will be doing it. It's a celebration of Cape Verdean culture and music, the some of us. And there's a poster out here. It's posted in the other room. And by I hopefully by this week that I will have a bunch of uh, paper flyers that can go out and go around. So we're looking forward to that. Carolee, do you want to say something about what you did with the kids on Friday too? All the things oh, that yeah. they did to prepare? Oh, yeah. They had a great day, let me tell you. <laughs> it started early in the morning, as we all know. But they came in, they played with things. Um, Rosemary made the salad, she did a craft with them. Welcome, Rosemary. And um, everything, it was great, wasn't it? Did you enjoy Friday? The kids were absolutely great. They did get in to get their nap. They ate lunch in the Covenant room. Um, I happened to sit at a table with them. Then after that, they went for their nap. They came back. We talked about the ice cream machine and how to make it and everything. And then they went and they um, played games. It was just a wonderful afternoon. They were so happy and so thrilled. And they couldn't, they talked to their parents when their parents came to pick them up. They were just so like, excited so i think this is a good thing to do and we probably will try to do it at least every other month with them thank you thank you all for your support thank you Lee, for all that you do to make that happen and now may hmm, something wrong with my we shall, uh, I will change batteries. And now may the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship, the Holy Spirit, and the love of God be with us. And now let us take a deep breath and center ourselves and bring ourselves into this holy space as we prepare ourselves for worship with the music.
Thank you. Does anyone read the meditation? Yes. Live as if you were living a second time and as though you had acted wrongly the first time. Where do you find this? <laughs> we have a dynamic pre, uh, call to worship this morning. The left side, as you can see in your program, reads part. And the right side, you saw in the program. Oh. All set? Yes. <laughs> Our call to worship. Are you listening? God is doing a new thing. Will you join in? Yes, yes, we will follow. Listen, did you miss it? God calls us again to build the kingdom of heaven. Will you join in? Yes, yes we, we will be the builders kingdom. of the kingdom. Wait, did you catch that again? God calls us to declare the good news to those in need. Will you join in? Yes, yes we will declare the good news with our voices and our lives. And still God calls. God never quits, calling us to live and to give abundant life. Will you join in? Yes, yes. we will join with God in sharing the gracious gift of abundant life with the world. May, May we respond to God's loving, persistent call with the persistent yes. A yes for us, a yes for our neighbors. And yes, for our world to be transformed with the good news that God's kingdom has come. Amen. A song of rejoicing. Rejoice in the Lord always. Please stand if you are able. Rejoice in the Lord. to smile when you say rejoice. <laughs> Our response of prayer of confession. Holy One, what a blessing and a privilege we share here in this sacred place and among this loving community. But like Jonah, we sometimes are jealous of what we share here. We know that others are longing and thirsting for what we know and experience. Forgive us our reluctance to open our doors, open our hearts, repent of our hesitations. Family of faith, the one who calls us to this place calls us to reconciliation through grace. God will not deny a repentant heart or an open spirit. Know that you are forgiven and walk in a new way that is made known to you in God's love. Amen. Let us join our voices together in our opening hymn, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy, number 23 in your black hymnal. And please rise in body or spirit as you are able.
You may be seated. And I am so sorry, Bella, but Lisa's not here today. And so you are invited to come up and get your bag of goodies if you want to hang out with us and worship. And so now we'll listen to the music of our wonderful choir. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10, the conversion of Nineveh. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, no human or animal, no herd or flock shall taste anything. They shall not feed nor shall they drink water. Humans and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring down upon them, and he did not do it. Our New Testament reading is Mark 1, 14 through 20, and it's on page 42 of your Pew Bible if you'd like to follow along. 
the beginning of the Galilean ministry. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in God and the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately left their nets and followed him as he went a little further. He saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in the boat mending the nets. Immediately he called to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The word of God for the people of God. Okay. Let us bring our hearts together in prayer. Summoning God in the pages of scripture, your voice calls us forth from our comfortable places. Too often our ears are closed to hearing your voice of hope, healing and reconciliation. Make today different. As we listen to your word, may our hearts hear the truth of your love for all creation. We are here, we are listening. It's not often that the Old Testament reading and the New Testament reading converge so well on a theme, which is God's call to all of us. I love Jonah. It's one of my favorite stories, Bella, this book of Jonah. It's about a man that is called by God to go tell people in a great big city that they're not doing too well and God's got a plan to destroy their city. Well, Jonah does not answer the call, as we know. He takes a ship going to Tarshish. And while on board, there's a big storm and the sailors are praying to all the gods to try to stop the storm and save them. And meanwhile, Jonah's down below deck trying to sleep. So they go down and get him and say, come on up and pray to your God. He's like, well, no, what, what could my God do that yours can't? They drag him up there and he said, well, this could be all my fault. And so they say, oh, okay, we'll throw you overboard then. <laughs> and so he's like, okay, that's a great idea. Throw me overboard. And I'm sure Jonah's thinking, and then I never have to go to Nineveh because I'll die in the depths of the ocean. Well, as God would have it, a big fish swallows him up and then spits Jonah out on the shore. And then we come to the scripture we heard today. He gets a second call to go back to Nineveh, the place that he didn't want to go in the first place, but he knows if he tries to go hop another ship to Tarshish, he's going to be spit up again on the beach. So he resigns himself to go to Nineveh. And he barely says the word and they repent anyway. And so it took a couple times for God to call Jonah before he really got around to doing and hearing what God wanted him to do. Now in the gospel, we hear calls to the disciples, but there's an urgency about them. And they drop everything and they go right away. It's so different than Jonah, right? They drop their nets and off they go. No questions asked, no hesitation, they just go. And so today we are going to contemplate our calls and what our calls mean, how we find them, how we have found them. John O'Donohue says, the very beginning of our life, we arrive on this earth and no one provides us a map for where we are going. It's something each of us has to figure out for ourselves. As we grow up, we gradually start 
to get an inkling of who we are in the world. And then some possibilities might emerge that call to us, that raise up our gifts that God calls us forth to do. This may happen at a very young age, right? Sometimes pe people who are young already know their gifts. They know what direction they want to go into. But deciding what to do with our life and how to live it is such a weighty thing to do. And it's not always easy. It's a big challenge to figure these things out. Some of us are called with the gifts that make that will make our life sing and will benefit from will benefit others and we know that right away some people just know that and they follow that path they know their direction and purpose but for most of us that's a trial and error process often we don't even recognize our gifts till someone else points them out to us some of our gifts come to us so naturally, we think of them as being ordinary. There's nothing really there to offer up to other people because don't the natural gifts that we have, don't others have it too? Some of us, other gifts are waiting to come forth and be discovered. Some of our gifts and our calls hide behind our hardships, trauma, and struggle. But the hope is that when we emerge transformed from the struggle, we discover something in ourselves to offer others. Sometimes the nature of our calling can change over our lifetime and can take us down pathways we never imagined. And then some of us never find what we are called to do. We get stuck in life and life is bur burdensome. It feels like we're living against the grain. Life is a labor of great effort instead of labor of great love. No pleasure is found in what we do or the gifts we have remain locked within us. That's usually a clear sign that something needs to change in our life. And you may have had this experience already where you were going along in life and you felt really stuck or you went through a lot of pain and life had to change somehow. It may have been painful. It may have hurt. It may have felt lonely. But when you got to the other side, you came out looking again and turning around and looking at yourself and seeing something within yourself that could be offered to others. John O'Donohue writes once again, when we do find what we are called to do, our life takes on a new focus, a new meaning, a new purpose. You come into the rhythm with the deeper longings in your heart when you find that right calling in your life. A new calling can open doors to new visions and a wonderful sense of belonging and feeling grounded in this world and in our lives. You will feel more at home with yourself, with your life and with others around you. As with Jonah and Jesus calling forth the disciples, God is continually calling us forth with our gifts to share with the world. But circumstances in our life might be such that we don't hear it, what we could be doing to benefit others in our world. We might be like Jonah. We refused the call because it's too hard. We're too scared of what might happen. And we're too worried what others might think of us. We don't feel worthy of a call. Answering a call can be risky business. Whether or not we respond to a call 
God keeps giving us second, third, and fourth chances to respond, just like God did with Jonah. Why? Because it is at this intersection of discovering our call and offering our call, we find joy, satisfaction, purpose, but it doesn't say that we won't encounter challenge and struggle along the way as we grow and transform either into that call or in finding a new call. So I have some questions for you today. What does a call mean to you? How would you define it? How has call been lived out in your life? It's a feeling. It's a feeling. Mm -hmm. How is that feeling? What's that feel like? It's just something that, that occurs sometimes to many, most, a lot of people. Natural, natural uh, uh, feeling in, in, inside of you. Mm -hmm. So a call is a feeling <coughs> of something natural inside of you. Okay. What do you think your call might be? Anybody? Or has been? Think of your vocation. Huh? No, for any, for you, anybody, yeah. Well, I know one call that uh, David has, reading scripture, yeah. Simple as that. How have you been called? What is a call to you? David, do you like reading scripture? I enjoy it. Okay. So your call and the intersection of your call and doing it, there's this joy that comes out of it, right? And in turn, you give us joy. And it's uh, from a historical perspective. Joy. Yes, yes. Nineveh, yes. Nineveh uh, was the capital of the Assyrian Empire. So it was a, it was a very important city in modern-day Iraq. So I love that. So at the intersection of your call to read, your interest in history is also yeah. um, ignited. Yeah. Yeah, so that that is also a part of that call for you. Yeah, Sue, I saw you raise your hand. I, I was just thinking of um, when I was asked to join the church activity, and I said no, it's not my call. And it was by Jay's boss, and about uh, four months later, he said, "Oh, you're not going to join the church activity." You sound like Jonah, so I just want to recap this point. <laughs> so you got a call from Joyce Bach to be the to run the thrift shop, to be the chair, and you refused. Three months later, Joyce calls you back, and then what happened? She pleaded with me. <laughs> she pleaded with you, okay. So you did. <laughs> so you went, so it was just when COVID started and you had a lot of challenges before you. Where are you now with that call? How has that manifested in your life, in your heart? Um, well, I feel that I do it okay. Um, I feel fairly confident that I'm doing an okay job. Yes. Um, <laughs> okay. And um, I'm, I'm trying to involve all our volunteers. Mm -hmm. One of them. 
Mm -hmm. Right. So you're taking on a leadership role and working with the volunteers, trying to be more creative with that process. And also, I want you to hear loudly that you are being affirmed by everyone in this congregation that you're doing <laughs> that you are doing an amazing job. You are like Jonah, but a lot of us are. So you're in good company. I mean, how many times have we been called into something like, yeah, I'm not so sure. And then we step into it. Yes, there's struggle. Yes, there's challenges. But I'm wondering if there's a sense of satisfaction in what you are doing for the church and for the people who come in the shop. Yes. Yes. Thanks be to God and thanks to you. Yeah. Carol Lee, I saw you raise your hand. I think that I was given a second chance. Um, like Jonah, you were given a second chance. Okay. I got more freedom in my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and all the responsibilities, but I will share something that was a secret that you didn't probably know. Back in 1962-ish, met Carol. Okay, so in 1962. I worked in the church, the Indian Auditor, just as I do here. Mm -hmm. um, and I put it all aside to raise a family and to help with income in the community. Right, so you did it to help and with income, yeah. Ah, so what Carol Lee said was, you know, in 1962, she started going to church, but she couldn't really get involved. involved. You were involved, ah. but then work and children and ra raising children, you had to put that all aside. And it sounds to me like, and get, and tell me if I'm wrong, that that call early in the sixties was fulfilling and purposeful for you. Yeah, and it was always buried for a while. And then you started working and it had to bear, be buried again. And yet when you came to this church, you were freer to get back into the church. Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. Different point of life and different point of view, right? From that perspective. Right. So I'm going to ask you the same question how does it make you feel to live out your call now in this church? <laughs> she's, she's on the edge of her seat. It makes, it makes me feel like I'm contributing. Yes, absolutely. You're contributing, yes. It makes me also feel like I'm using the gifts that God Absolutely. You're using the gifts God gave you. Absolutely. Yeah. Perfect. Anybody else brave enough? Yes, Joyce. I think I was given a second chance when I got re I was retired. Oh. And after that, God kept giving me opportunities to be stronger in the choir, but more for the thrift shop, for belonging to each other. And to be the clerk, each time I just said yes. And I knew God was wanting me to do it. Wow, she's like the disciples. Yeah, yeah right? You just said yes. Once you retired and had that space in your life um, from the job that I understand that you also enjoyed, yes, and felt fulfilled in. But yet, when you reach that point of retirement, there's this liminal time when you don't know what's going to happen. And so Jesus came along and said, Joyce, come do this. You're like, yeah, okay, I'll drop my net and come along and join you. I had the pause when my husband was passing away. Yes. And then I was remembered. Right. So there were struggles in there while you were going through your call, but even that might have been transforming for your the new ways that you were called. Yes, Kay. Well, I, I don't like volunteering. 
That's lovely. I love that, Kay. You know, so you're going back to a year ago when we had that big meeting and we told stories to raise up our values as a church. And then we started meeting with consultants and you knew, you heard the call. You're another disciple. Jesus came along and asked you and you said, yes, yeah. One last, does anybody want to share one last one? Yes, Sam, Samantha. So your call right now is being with your husband and being mom to Isabella. I love that. Amen to that, right? So think about that. It's the ordinary things of life, too, that we're called to, right? You know, taking care of the people in our lives. It's really, yes, Rosemary. I love that. I love that. So sometimes there's a nagging in your life, your heart's unsettled, your life feels unsettled, and that nagging just won't go away. And then somewhere at the end of that, when you stick it through, a light starts to shine, and then it starts to get brighter, and you start to see more clearly a direction for you that you feel called to go in. Is that about right? Yeah. Yes. So sometimes that yes takes a long time because that that call is kind of nagging at you. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Any other sharing? All right. So I want to you have cards in your um in your pews and pencils and i am inviting each of you to write down what you think your call is right now and as you've been hearing they can be really ordinary things similar to what saint uh, mother Teresa said do all things with great love so what is it in your life that you're being called to do with great love i hope that helps translate what a call is so anybody needs any help? There's your pencils, there's your pencils and cards. I will give you one, Stephanie. Do you have a pencil or anything? Okay. And when you're done, I invite you to come up and put it in this box. I will hold it up here when you're ready. No. No, these will not be read out loud. They, were go they are going to be blessed. That's why they're in a box like this. <laughs> I know what yours says, yes.
And if you don't, if you are unable to come up, just raise your hand and I will come to you. <laughs> I won't make you crawl. <laughs> Another one, great. Oops. Yep. Ah, all right. Thank you. Getting my steps in. So before we go on to this next box, I want to read you these words from um, John O'Donohue. Before we were even born, our hearts, minds, and souls were fashioned in divine imagination. God gave each of us such care and attention that went into the creation of each of us, placed within each person our gifts, that are uniquely ours. One of the greatest challenges is to discover, and not only discover them, but express them. The great law of life is to be yourself. And we are invited to learn how to become what God dreamed us to be. To be born is to be chosen. To be born is to be called. So we have, I got this all wrong. This was supposed to be church and this was supposed to be us, but call isn't just for us individually. It's for churches too. And so I want you just to take a minute or two and reflect and write it down. And I will go around again and collect them. What you think the call is for our church How, what are the gifts that we have? We can think about our values of community, friendship, fellowship, and outreach. How is God calling those values and gifts forth in our world right now? So I invite you to write down how you might think, what you might think God is calling us into. Mm -hmm. It's a church box. Don't ignore that. It says church.
you, Bella. Thank you so much. <laughs> We have some people still furiously writing, which is wonderful. All right. Oh, she's flipping. Thank you. So just a few last words before from Steve Garnis Holmes before we bless these amazing calls that you have filled these boxes with. Sometimes the call is to stay and not to head off in some new adventure, but to work through where you are at, to make peace, to mend a relationship, to endure a struggle, to fulfill life and faithfulness. Sometimes Jesus needs you most crucially right where you are to be his vessel in exactly what you're doing with new love, to accompany him where you always go, to do the same old thing with new light, to bear grace even at home, even in this church. So let us bless these together. May all of you respond to the call of your gifts and find the courage to follow its path. May the suffering your calling brings be but winter before the spring. May the companionship of your doubts restore what your beliefs leave out. May the secret hungers of your heart harvest from emptiness its sacred fruit. May the steady one be with you, sustain you in your work, companion you in your challenges, and grant you strength, wisdom, perseverance, love, beauty, and courage. If you are in Christ, then where you are is holy ground. God bless you deeply and increase your delight. Amen. Let us join together in our responsive hymn and insert in your bulletin the summons. And you are invited to rise in body or spirit as you are able.
please be seated. We are called into this time of prayer in which we lift up our joys and concerns after the pastoral prayer. And after we do, we are all invited to join in together and say, oh Lord, hear our prayers. And so let us bring our hearts in prayer this day for the many things going on in our world. Eternal God, we come to you again to pray for the church, the world, and all people and situations on our hearts. Hear us as we lift those prayers to you today, whether they are loud or in our hearts. We thank you that you care for those who are distanced from us in relationship, geography, worldview, or otherwise. We thank you for your faithfulness. When we see all the evil and suffering in the world, it can be easy to feel overwhelmed and to give up but we are grateful that you have not given up on us. We offer prayers today for situations that seem beyond repair, healing, and hope. We thank you for continuing to invite us and calling us to be partners in your transforming, reconciling, and redeeming ministries, not only in our communities, but beyond. We pray for the work of this community of faith and for ministries that are sharing your love and care in our community. We thank you for the gift of relationship for friends and family, colleagues and the communities to which we belong. When one rejoices, we all rejoice. When one suffers, we all suffer. So we offer our prayers of thanksgivings and our prayer petitions of lament for those on our hearts this day. We thank you for hearing our cries, for knowing what we need before a word is on our lips and for holding in your loving care those people and situations known only to you. So hear our prayers today as we lift them up. We lift up Lisa, Alan. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. O 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 oh Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who are near who are in need of care and for the caregivers. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. For all those caught in the conflicts of war in the Middle East and around the world. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. For the leaders of our countries, for a turning of their hearts towards you. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. Now with our voices united as one, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. For the many ways God calls forth our gifts and this church to serve others in this community, 
may we be like the disciples in hearing the call and saying yes. So it is in gratitude we now take our offering. worship. Holy God, change our hearts and our lives. Renew us by your good news. Use the gifts we bring for your holy work of transformation as we seek to go where Jesus leads us. Amen. Let us join our voices together in our closing hymn, Lord of the Dance. It's an insert in your order of worship.
advance, my friends, with Jesus who calls you forth from the places of comfort and come forth with him and say yes to God as we are called in this world to be who we are meant to be, to be who we are created to be. Go in peace, my friends. Amen.